start this video off with a question. Wherever you are right now, just take a good look around you, just take in your surroundings, and then ask yourself this. How much influence do you think your environment has over your life? That's one of those questions that I never really bothered to ask myself until one day when I'm a little bit lost and I'm on the self-improvement side of YouTube and I come across Tom Bilyeu, this guy. Of all things, he happens to be talking about Doritos. And a huge thank you to Shopify for sponsoring this piece. More on them and why they're relevant later. So, Tom's talking Doritos, the dusty orange triangle chip. He was talking about how he used to struggle with addictive eating and how it was one of those habits that he found really hard to break. And then out of nowhere, he just goes, I find it really hard to eat one Dorito and really easy to eat zero. What? <laughs> but he explained himself. He basically said, because if I eat one Dorito, I will eat the rest of the Doritos because I find it really hard to stop. So my solution is to not start. And the way that I do that is that I don't bring Doritos into my house. Oh, man. I was embarrassed because I was really attracted to how lazy this was. Instead of using willpower or discipline, he just outsourced it all to his environment. He just didn't bring Doritos into the house, and then the work was done. Plus, the results were there for him. I mean, he used a bunch of other tactics, but he said that the Dorito hack, or just using his environment, was one of the key things. And sure enough, he went from this to this. Success story, Tom. Well done. Great job. But honestly, impressive. Great work. All right, so now I'm curious about this Doritos hack because I'm like, what am I doing the hard way that my environment could do the easy way? And how else can I use the space around me to improve my life? What else don't I know? Our story starts in 1984. Not that 1984, this 1984, baby. size on cocaine time, Woo. Our main character is this guy, Roger Ulrich, and he has just published a landmark paper. See, Roger had this theory and he had sort of been toying with it for a while. When he was a teenager, he suffered from kidney disease and he spent a lot of time in hospitals and also a lot of time recovering in his own bed. He found that the hospitals would be grim and bland and he didn't really like them, but in his own bed, he had this window and he'd just become fixated with this big, beautiful pine tree. In the simplest words, However, this tree made him happy. He eventually, thankfully, gets healthy, grows up, becomes an adult, but he keeps thinking about this tree. Intuitively, he knew that this tree made him feel good, but Roger wanted to prove it. So he devises an experiment. Between 1972 and 1981, Roger does a test on 46 patients all in the same boat. They're all recovering from gallbladder surgery. They're in the same type of hospital beds, getting the same type of care, all healing from the same thing. But they don't all heal the same. Why is this? Back to the pine trees. Roger changed their environment. He put half of the patients staring at a beautiful wall. He's got like this view, it's all scenic. There's a tree and some sunshine, basically replicating his childhood bedroom. And the other half of the patients he had with a window still, but staring at a brick wall, almost no natural light. Pretty, pretty grim and bland. Now, as you might have guessed, the patients with the beautiful view, they were just a lot happier. But what's cooler is it didn't stop there. They also healed faster, received fewer negative evaluations from nurses, and they ingested far less painkillers. Roger argued that this beautiful view made them recover quicker. So if something as simple as a window or a pine tree can change your body, imagine what changing your environment can do to your mind. So that's Roger Ulrich's experiment. And the reason that I love it is because it shows just how powerful our environment can be, potentially on a deeper level than we know. But at the end of the day, I'm not in a hospital. I'm not recovering from gallbladder surgery. I'm in a house, just vibing. And statistically, <laughs> so are you. What? Yeah, it turns out that people on average spend 90% of their time indoors. <laughs> and if you do as well, man, then yeah, I guess it makes sense to use it to your advantage, right? <laughs> The only problem is, how? The only practical tip we've gotten so far is don't bring Doritos into the house. See, after hearing that Doritos tip, I'm like, got it, next logical move, remove my Doritos from the house, which for me, I was trying to drink less at the time, so it was beer. I couldn't quite part with it, but I knew that I could take my beer from the cold fridge and put it in the warm cupboard. Beer is suddenly very undesirable. But after that, I actually didn't know what to do next. So like any lost soul, I pick out the number one best-selling self-help book and read it. Dun -da -da -da. Oh God, don't say it, don't say it. Atomic habits. Oh, so I get to chapter 12 of this book and what I find out is that this idea of not bringing Doritos into your house, this simple little idea is what James Clear calls automating good decisions. This is the idea that if there's something that you want, you set up your space to make it happen automatically. Instead of having mm -hmm. to constantly make those decisions, your environment makes them for you. Just like Doritos, oh. set and forget, you get it. And as for more examples of what this might look like, he did this survey of all of his readers amongst seven different categories and he asked them what their favorite type of automatic environmental design decision is. And here's what people said. Nutrition. Use smaller plates. Sleep. Remove the TV from your bedroom. Productivity. Delete games and social media from your phone. Focus. Keep your phone in do not disturb mode. Health. Buy better shoes to avoid back pain. Finance. Call your service providers and ask for a lower rate. Happiness. And yes, this is my favorite of the survey answers. People voted. Get a dog.
I got two, double happy. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm not saying go out and do all of these seven things and your life's going to be brilliant. <laughs> what I might recommend, though, is using these categories for your own space, so answering them in your own way. The point being that these good decisions that we want to make, we don't have to make them. Our space can make them for us. But obviously not all good habits happen like this. I mean, there are ones that we have to make every single day. Something like working out isn't automatic. It needs constant discipline. Which brings us to our next topic. There's this brilliant Mitch Hedberg line where he's talking about bread. You know that, Pepper's Farm Bread, that stuff is fancy, man. It's wrapped twice. That's why I don't buy it. I don't need another step between me and toast. Preach. He also said that bread largely influences a duck's opinion of him, but today, for once, we're not talking about ducks. We're talking about friction. Friction refers to the tiny little steps in between you and the thing you want. For Mitch, it was him and toast. For you, it might be you and writing that book you've been putting off. Not pointing fingers at anybody. The idea is that the steps in between, the friction, can be manipulated by your environment. I'll give you two examples. Let's say you want to go to the gym first thing in the morning. Your alarm goes off, you turn it off, you're like, okay, find my shoes, find my socks, get my gym bag, blah, blah, blah. All of those little steps, even if they only take five minutes, are moments of friction. And each one presents an opportunity for you to be like, uh, actually, I'm not going to the gym. Screw it. I'm going back to bed. Whereas a low friction alternative might look like you've already got your gym bag packed, you've already got your shoes laid out and your shirt and whatever it is. And also, your phone with your alarm on it is by that stuff. So by the time that you turn off your phone, you're already there at your gym gear. And what's cool is you're the same person in both those scenarios, but it's a different environment and it usually leads to different results. On the other end, let's say there's a habit that you want to quit. Here, you might want to add friction. So for example, let's say you want to stop ordering Uber Eats because we've all seen that tweet. Post Uber Eats clarity has got to be one of the worst feelings ever. What have I done? <laughs> Now, when it comes to a digital environment, you do not have the home turf advantage. No, a company like Uber Eats has put so much. All right, guys, we'll get started in a couple more minutes, just giving people a little bit more time. I think people tend to show up around 12 10, so we'll get started around then. Uh, just a few more minutes. Enjoy this audio. It is perfect for this call. R&D into making sure there is as little friction in between you and getting that food and parting with your money. That might look like you make the app forget your bank details, you log out, you make your password something that you have to reset because you don't remember it half the time. By adding more friction to your environment, you make this bad habit difficult. Once again, same person, different environment, different results. Now, before we talk about pain points and sensors and space design, I want to talk about Shopify, baby. So just let that marinate. And after the break, a story about airports in Germany, which I promise is more interesting than it sounds. If you are creative, if you make stuff, if you're entrepreneurial, if you're looking to start a business or if you already have a business or anything like that, then hey, listen up. Yeah? All right. I want to talk about Shopify. Yes, I use Shopify for my shops, truthless.com. It's a product that I use every day and I genuinely endorse them. I haven't always been with Shopify, but when I switched, my sales actually doubled. That's because they've got freaking resources and plugins and all of this wild stuff to make your life a whole lot easier. Not a coder. I can't code. My HTML stops at MySpace. All right. I think that's good. Hope you guys enjoyed that audio. It's, um, I love how he brought up about atomic habits that was actually the first time i've read i've listened to that audio um i just liked the first couple minutes and it really spoke to me and it honestly is really aligned with this call so um that was funny i wish you guys saw the video though it was it was pretty hilarious i'll have to put it in the uh in the mindset chat but um uh, today we're going to talk about how um environments affect us so couple things we're going to go over how like frequencies affect us how um let's see how things that we put in our bodies like drug alcohol nicotine over the counter stuff um how that affects us and then we'll also talk about how people affect us as well um and so let's just get right into it i hope you guys are having a great friday had a great week i hope your trading went well if you trade um, I had a good trade yesterday, pretty happy about it. Um, but we'll kind of, let's just go right into it. So how environments affect us. So the first thing is, is, um, basically our environments to, in a modern world are a lot of the things that affect us, we don't even see. And it's, it's things like Wi-Fi signals, um, Bluetooth, um, you know, uh, radio signals, we got our phones, we got electricity, we got all of these um, artificial energy sources around us. And it really affects our, our brain's ability to send out signals. So if you think of it like, 
uh, how can I how can I put an analogy out? Um, like, let's say if you're in the woods, right? If you're in like a national park or something, and your phone stops working, right? That's because you're so far away from the physical environment where phones are active, like power lines, um, city stuff like that. Um, and so that signal isn't as strong when you're far away from it. The same thing happens with our mind. When our mind is far away from signals like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, phones, electricity, all of these things, it thinks more clearly. It's it's kind of the opposite, I guess I would say, because yeah, when the phone's away, it stops working. But when our brain's away, it actually gets stronger. It becomes more heightened, and it, it you have you have the ability to send out more frequencies because the phone signals are so low. So when signals are high, if you're in your house and you got Bluetooth, you got um, you got the Wi-Fi, you got all these things around you, your brain's ability to send signals is is muffled. It's like the phone in a in in the forest. It just it doesn't really have. It's not working at optimum levels. And so how do we how do we kind of help that or or fix that or find a solution to where we can put ourselves in a position to, to raise our vibration and bring it as high as we possibly can. Um, there's a few things that we can do. Um, a few things that I've read and, and learned about where, you know, you can, and, and these are li literally just simply ways to minimize the effect of other vibrations, like through the ether of Wi-Fi, all that stuff. Um, and that's going to be EMF protectors. Um, if you go to Q, um, the QN labs or something like that. I forget. I'll have to look it up and, and get back to you. But um, there are, if you just Google EMF protectors, there's, there's ones that you can put like on your phone. It's literally like a sticker that goes right here. Um, you can do, do ones that plug into outlets. Um, you can buy one for like every room. I know GoGo knows about some um, stones that are really good. They're natural EMF protectors. Um, and I don't know if Gogo's on this call, but um, I'll I'll have her let us know what what stones those are because they're really helpful as well. Um, and just keeping one in your pocket is really good. Um, other ways that we can kind of minimize the effect that these signals have on us are things like sleeping without our phones. You know, keeping our phone or laptop out of the room. You know, maybe getting an analog clock that can that can literally is just there to show tell time and 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 set your alarm like that would be really really helpful for me i i haven't really been very good at it i've been sleeping with my phone lately um but when i when i get back into not sleeping with my phone and i'm going to start kind of working into that this week i what i'll do is i'll set my alarm and put it on the other side of the room you know me put it in my closet um, just because I don't have an analog clock and I'm not really buying things right now because I'm, you know, make I'm trying to make money um, and I don't really have, I got all these bills and stuff. So I, you know, I'm not making unnecessary purchases, right? So I'm trying to find an easier solution that can, that I can utilize today. And so, so honestly, I tend to wake up before my alarm anyway. So when I'm in optimum levels, I don't even need an alarm. I just keep my phone like in my basement and then I go upstairs and I sleep. Um, but yeah, keeping those electronics out of your room, you know, keep get the TV out of there, get the phone out of there. You know, all of these blue light screens have the ability to keep us awake and really disrupt our sleep. And that doesn't even mention the fact that we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in our phones. So like even just beyond the signals, having your phone on you is going to make you give you that temptation to look at it like that guy was talking about. It's like it's not about it's not about, um, you know, uh, it's not about eating. It's not about having like a whole bag of Doritos. It's just literally having the Doritos sitting there and then you eat one and eating one doesn't mean you just eat one. When you eat one, that means you've basically accepted the fact that you're going to eat the whole bag or like half the bag or just eat till you're full. And so understanding that out of sight, out of mind is a really, really good strategy to, to utilize, especially for our phones and for sleeping. 
Um, and so, yeah, sleeping without electronics is really, really helpful. Um, I've even heard some people will, uh, you know, they have like those outlet timers for like Christmas lights outside. Um, and you can use that inside and use that for your, your, your Wi-Fi router. And I've heard, you know, people will set a timer and like they'll set their Wi-Fi to turn off at 10 PM and then turn back on at 6 AM. And so they're no, they don't even have those inv invisible frequencies in their house during those sleeping hours so they really get a really good night of sleep and they don't have like their, their dreams disturbed right like a lot of the times like when i sleep without my phone without electronics in the room i'm much more conscious about my dreams i have the ability to manifest before going to sleep and then i dream about all the things i manifested as opposed to if i have my phone in my in my in my room before i go to sleep Chances are I'll look at it, you know, maybe I'll watch Netflix, maybe I'll go on Instagram, you know, all those things that, that you know, 95% of people do. And then you end up having dreams about the things that you were watching, the things that you were reading, the posts that you were watching, the posts that you were reading, stuff like that. And it disrupts your sleep and it disrupts your patterns and your ability to manifest because your mind is so focused on these artificial, these, these like things that aren't really in your physical reality. They're just kind of distractions there are ways for you to just get dopamine get get a quick hit of endorphins you know and 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 so you know limiting those distractions limiting those temptations is really really helpful um i haven't gotten a timer on my outlet or anything yet because you know i'm not the only one who lives here i'm not the only one who lives in this house so i can't really run the rules but when i do get my own place that's something that i'm definitely going to um to, to have in my home. I'm going to have EMF protectors in every room. I'm going to have an outlet timer for my, for my Wi-Fi because in reality, the only reason I would need my Wi-Fi for productive reasons would be to trade. And so, and I don't really trade at night. So if I had my Wi-Fi off, I wouldn't even have the temptation to watch Netflix. Wouldn't even have the temptation to get on um, social media or anything because you know, if I were to do that, if I were to turn off my my Wi-Fi, I would probably put my phone on airplane mode so that I couldn't even use cellular data, that kind of thing. Um, because there is still that temptation of cellular data, but you know, it's 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 it limits the distraction, right? It it lowers your probability of 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 distracting yourself, and maybe you'll just pick up a book, right? Maybe you'll get this book or that book or you know, and just put all these things in your environment. Like for me, I set up my nighttime environment. I make my bed in the morning, right? And then I set whatever book I want to read on my pillow. And then I have to make the decision because I see it. So I have to make the decision not to read it as opposed to simply forgetting that I was supposed to read because it's not sitting there. So like you can set up your environment for success as well. Like the guy was saying, when you're, if you want to be running or going to the gym in the morning, Pack your bag, set your foam alarm and put it on your bag so that you have to literally get up, turn off your alarm and look straight at your clothes that you're set up for going to the gym. And so it makes that eat that decision a lot easier. That's where like the habit stacking comes in from atomic habits and how we can really set ourselves up and set our environments up for the things that we really want to be doing. Um Another thing is uh, avoiding Bluetooth headphones. And that's like one of the hardest things ever. And I was kind of upset because I bought I bought two, you know, corded headphones on Facebook Marketplace only to find out that it still has Bluetooth. And I'm like, why does it have Bluetooth if there's a cord? It's like you don't need Bluetooth if you're if you're plugging stuff in. You know, So I, I literally text him back. I was like, I, I bought it a corded headphone because i didn't want bluetooth in my ears and it just kind of it, you know i couldn't really do anything about it but um finding headphones that don't have bluetooth is very difficult so make sure that you aren't just buying corded headphones because a lot of the times they'll still have that bluetooth feature and i mean if you think about it it's just like you're literally putting a bluetooth signal in your ears that is an inch away from your brain and where do your thoughts generate, right? So it's like you're putting Bluetooth 
and you're just clouding everything. So like it's it, if you imagine it like that, you can automatically believe how like negative that would like negative that um how how negative that can affect you, negatively affect you. Okay, sweet. Tony's got the juice. Okay, nice. Um sick. Okay. I need to copy that. And put that in my notes because I don't even I haven't heard half of those words. <laughs> I seriously have I don't I don't think I've heard many of those. Um, all I know is there's one that's black. That's really all I know about. But I'm gonna put that in my notes so I have it for later. Thank you for providing that. Um, and if you guys need those, I'm sure Don Tony could post them in the chat. Um, but they'll also be on the the live chat replay on this video. So. Feel free to just rewatch this if you need that information as well. Um, yeah, to, another thing that really helped me, and that's why I love wood firing so much, is because like it just takes me away, right? Getting out into nature, um, putting yourself in the woods, go camping for a weekend, and leave your phone at home by a burner that has all the important numbers on it, and so you're able to talk to people, but you don't have all these other unnecessary signals in your in your personal space like going and camping for three days without a phone like i can't tell you how refreshing that is especially if you're just in the woods you're you're having a bonfire you're 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 grilling over the campfire you know you're maybe you're by a stream and you go fishing or you just lay in the water going you know do a little floating down the river you know there's so many things you can do that just gives you that technology break and technology breaks are really helpful um so that is how we want to utilize our protections for digital signals and how we can kind of help the sleeping and helping raise our vibration even when we're surrounded by all of these signals um, and the next one's going to be how like drugs alcohol and nicotine affect our vibrations as well um, because that is that is our that is part of our environment because it affects our psyche our, our way to think our brain waves our, our abilities to send out signals and so and this one's a very interesting topic because um because it it, it has a little bit of both which is strange and it's kind of confusing but in low doses, drugs, alcohol, and nicotine actually raise vibration, or they what they really do is they block the the stressor mind. It relaxes us, so we don't think about so much that's going on in our life, like all the problems, the bills, all these things. It quiets that part of the mind, so we can relax and actually think about what's important and have a creative way of thinking. And it's it's literally on the bottom of the list for high vibrational things like there's joy there's 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 happiness there's gratitude um there's healthy food there's working out there's um reading there's audios there's all these things that are really good to raise our vibration and drugs alcohol and nicotine are at the bottom so they're the worst of the best okay and that's that's like the best way i can explain it because yes in small doses they're helpful but the problem is they're addictive. So then they become uh, a habit. Like you, you, you feel the need to drink or you feel the need to smoke or you feel the need to do that drug, right? To get yourself back to that vibration that you felt the first time. But you never ever really get back to that point. And over time, you start to do more and do more, do more. And then you go over that, that, that level where it becomes negative and becomes lowering your vibration. And that line is like, it happens so quick. You don't even realize it and take me as an example, because I've been there and I've done it and it, yes, it helps, but then it doesn't. And then it's horrible. So don't, it, so think of this as a negative thing. Okay. It's, it lowers your vibration ultimately. And you know, on random times, whatever if you're having a mental if you're stuck mentally go out and have some drinks right that'll help but don't make it a habit don't let that be your 
your your your way of raising your vibration what you should be doing is working out and eating healthy and reading books and and feeding your mind with positivity and gratitude and and all of these i am affirmations and all these good things and let this last thing that raises your vibration be the last resort because yes it can help but there is a very dark side to it and i know it's probably touched everyone on this call and in one way or another um same thing goes with over-the-counter drugs like uh uh, aspirin, um, anything that has like di diazepam, like allergy medicine, um, NyQuil, all like literally everything, anything that has a pill that isn't like a vitamin or a mineral, um, is going to lower your vibration, pain relievers, anxiety, depression, uh, allergies. Yeah. Look, anything from big pharma, it all has the ability to lower your vibration. And so weed is great. I love weed. <laughs> I smoke weed every day. <laughs> so you, you can be, if it helps you, then, then by all means go at it. Cause I, I, it helps me so much. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my take on weed. Um, fluoride's another big one. That, that one, that was one I had, had difficulty handling because most toothpaste have fluoride in it. Um, and so, and, you know, I, I've had cavities like throughout my, throughout my life, like mainly in high school. Cause I ate Skittles every single day. But, um, so I fe always felt the need to have fluoride, but, um, I since switched to fluoride free toothpaste. I only drink spring water. So tap water is going to have fluoride in it. It's going to have chlorine, all that stuff. Um, so getting filters for your, your sinks are really good or just getting, um, those five gallon jugs of water delivered to you. I get that delivered every month. Um, and that's really helpful because then you're not use, using all these plastic and all this, all that stuff. And, um, and you're not having all this waste. You're using reusable plastic, um, which isn't that good. I wish it was glass or metal because plastic eventually leaches into the water and that's just how it goes um so you know honestly i've heard distilled water is the best because you're because you know you buy a metal distiller and then you don't have any any toxins from plastic so that's always a good one there's also filters for your sinks so you can literally just pour it right into a glass and that works as well um so fluoride's a big one it's all it's an all toothpaste it's in all your tap water. Um, and so that's, that's a big one. It calcifies your penile gland. And what happens is like your penile gland is basically the source to the third eye. And that's what really raises your vibration and awareness to be able to literally feel everything, feel like this has a vibration. This has a vibration. This has a vibration. I have a vibration. My dog has a vibration. And you start to feel these things. It's kind of like if you've ever done acid. Like, <laughs> and I'm just going to talk about it because I've done it. And um, I love it so much because it 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 raises your vibration. You're, you can literally think and understand how somebody else is feeling just by looking at them. And that's what happens when you raise your vibration. You can literally feel the tension in somebody who's fe who feels negative, who, who is talking bad to themselves. Maybe they don't feel good. Maybe they look sick. You know, you can literally tell at a, at a, at a glance of your eye. Um, and the best way I can, I can relate it is, is doing hallucinogens um, because you literally become aware of everything. Like things begin to breathe. And it's not because of the acid that you see it. Like, yes, I mean, it's because of the acid that you see it, but it was always there. They were always breathing. But it's just that 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 vibration, that frequency, that awareness that brought on the physicality of it all. It's always there, but you just can't see it. And so um, I'm not suggesting you do it, but I'm just just, a, just a, a little comparison of how I relate to these things. Um, and the last one is people. Um, people have some of the most effect on all of us. And it's ten, it tends to be the people that you live with that affect you the most because you see them every day. 
Um, you see their habits, that you see what they do, what how they talk, what they say, how they feel, how they present themselves. And so a lot of the times that's why like you see like groups of friends or people that live together and they're all like saying the same things. They got the same jokes. They got the same ways of talking. Um, they all do the same thing. They like the same things. And so they fall into this habit of being like the people around you and not really finding your own individuality. And so a lot of the times, like they can influence you to a point where like, let's say you live with like five people for five years and then you go and live by yourself and you realize over time, it's like, wow, I didn't actually like playing video games. I didn't actually like watching sports all the time. I didn't really like drinking all the time. It's like all these things that you realize weren't really you, you were just doing them because everybody around you was doing them. It's like that thing, like you're, it's that saying of, um, you, your income is the, is the average of your five closest friends. And it's so true. It's because there's, you know, the, the people you spend your time with end up being what influences your behavior. And so people become your environment. And so you get are affected by everything. And that's why this group is so great is because we have the ability to just go into discord and find so many people that are working on themselves so many people that are trading so many people that are working on their minds working on um, reading and developing and fitness and health and having that environment is so so amazing so we we just need to be very grateful for that because it's so awesome that we have all these amazing people with very similar intentions in life. Um, we want to listen to the people that have what we want, right? Like it, if you're listening to, if you're taking advice from people that don't have what you want, you're going to get more of what they have, right? Like they, they're giving you advice based on their own experience. But if their experience isn't what the experience that you want, then there's no reason to ask them in the first place. We want to ask the people that have what we want, people that have been there, people who have, um, have, let me rephrase that people who have been there and since gotten better, since gotten out of that, since had success after the problem, you don't want to talk to somebody who has the same problems as you, but haven't figured it out. Right. It's like, cause if they haven't figured it out, then how are, is what, how, are you going to figure it out by doing what they're telling they're telling you to do right so it's like who do you listen to make sure we're listening to people who have what we want um and one and this one really spoke to me when i heard about a year ago it's like people tend to spend three minutes with people they should spend three hours with and people tend to spend three hours with people who they were supposed to, who they should be spending three minutes three minutes with so it's like yeah um you know, maybe you have this old friend group, you've been friends forever, but they don't, you know, you're still stuck in the same place. You're doing the same things. You're still working that dead end job. Right. And if we continue to spend all of our time with those people, we're going to get more of what we already have. But if we change that friend group, if we start to hang out with somebody who maybe is a little bit more successful, maybe, maybe that one friend who has really made it, you know, it really helps to just kind of making that shift. And I had to do that myself. It's like, I'm back in Philly and I got all these friends and they're amazing. Like they're the most loving hippy dippy crew ever. And, but like they, I don't know, they, and they're doing well for themselves, but it's like the, it takes me back to the place of where I was when I was hanging out with them in high school and stuff. And I'm afraid that I'm going to fall back into my ways so I kind of avoid that situation. I avoid all of those people. Maybe I hang, hang out with them once in every every five months. You know, I haven't really seen them since October or really November. Um, and so I kind of just do it in spurts. And and maybe that's just what you need to do with some people and some some family members. And and it, it you know it's it's important to know and be aware of who raises your vibration and who lowers it, and adjust your time with them accordingly. You know. And that, and that's, uh, you know, don't, you know, don't waste time with people that don't have 
the same values as you as well. And that's why this group is so great. It's like we all have very similar values. And, you know, maybe we have different beliefs and stuff like that, but we all have the same um, intention to grow and develop and become better. <laughs> I got five on it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's that with the people. And then what we say also affects us. And this will be this will, this these will be like the last points. Like what what we say, and then what other other people say tend to affect what we think, how we feel, stuff like that. And especially, it's like those I am statements. It's like you know. It, and I'm just gonna kind of say, um, it's gonna be like say this and not this. And I'm just gonna kind of go through a few of them. That that kind of just popped in my head, sounded right. And so we went with it. Um, it's like, so it, let's say you're late for something or somebody's waiting on you, right? We want to say thank you for your patience and not I'm sorry that I'm late, right? It's like that simple shift of, 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 of I am statements where you're expressing gratitude for them waiting for you as opposed to feeling bad and guilty about something that you really couldn't control. Or maybe you could control it, but it's still not important to put that focus on there. All right. We want to focus on the gratitude. And honestly, it, it, you get a better response. It's like if somebody says sorry to you for being late, you think about the fact that they were late and you're like, yeah, you were late. You need to say sorry. But if you say, like, thank you for patience, the response is automatically like, wow, like this is a very calm person. Like they just they just said thank you to me as opposed to talking about the bad it's like they were talking about the positive as opposed to the negative and so they got a more positive response and just make that simple shift and be aware of how people respond because it really does change all that it's crazy um and then let's see uh, oh yeah and then what we want to say also is say like i worked so hard today and i'm so excited to get my rest like i deserve this rest right and don't say, I'm so tired, or like, it's been such a long day, you know, like, it, and those are things that just automatically happen. Like, like I said it the other day, I was like, man, it's been, like somebody was, I guess I was, I was in the discord and I was waiting for an order at like some barbecue joint. And I was on my phone, on my phone. The lady says, your order's ready. I'm still on my phone. She says the order's ready, still on my phone. The lady next to me is like, Hey, excuse me. You're, she's talking to you. I was like, oh, what? Like, oh, order's ready. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I was so stuck in my head and, and what I was saying in Discord that I didn't even realize what was going on. And then I immediately said, oh, it's just been a long day. It's like, no. Like, I and, and I, I stopped myself. Like, I said it. And I was like, no, you know what? It hasn't really been a long day. You were just really focused on what you were doing, right? So it's like making sure that we... Be, first become aware of those statements because most of the time you will say i'm so tired but the important thing is to first become aware that you said it correct yourself be like i'm so tired be like no mind you need to stop that's not true i'm not tired i worked really hard today and that's that's it you know just be grateful for it as opposed to complaining about it um and then another one's like, I'm so thankful I'm learning and growing, getting closer to the solution, not saying like, I'm such a failure. Like, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe I let myself lose that trade. Like, I knew I should have done this and I didn't. You know, all of these um, regretful statements, they don't change anything because we don't have control over the past. The things that have already happened, the thing that happened a minute ago, we can't really control anything about it beyond um, the solution. Like we can look at it in a productive way to find some way to fix it. But if we're looking at it in guilt and in shame, it doesn't really help anything. And so, and that's, that really affects our vibration. Um, and then the last one is like, I would love to do more of dot, 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 because it's important. And I think it would help me not like I'm not doing enough, like, right. It's like, we don't want to talk about the fact that we haven't been doing enough. We want to encourage, encourage ourselves to do more. And so if I, you know, like set a plan, write out, write down a schedule for the day, 
and then I miss some stuff, I could either feel guilty about that or be like, well, listen, you, you put down like 12 things to do today and you did nine of them. You did a really good job. It's not set up for me to do all of them. Things happen. Life happens. Things pop up. People need your help. You get a random phone call. Maybe something happens and you're, you're in a stressful state for 30 minutes and you lose some time. You know, things happen. But we need to just focus on the fact that we got those nine things done, not the three that we didn't do. Right. And it's it's really, really that simple. It's not really easy, but it's it's a very simple shift. Um, and then the last thing is, yeah, and we want to um, like we want to encourage others and not like not take them down. We, we, we need to inspire desire and not guilt. And that's something that happens to ourselves. We we can we can create our own guilt based on our own thoughts, or we can accidentally say something that we didn't mean and then cause somebody else to feel guilt. And then it becomes this effect of vibrations around you as well. It's like not only your mind's vibration gets affected, but you affect somebody else's vibration. You realize that, and then it affects your vibration because you're like, dang, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to do that. And then it becomes this thing where you're stuck, right? And and you got to work your way back out of it. So being aware and making sure that we are responding instead of reacting, you know, give that, take that second, right? It's like maybe you, maybe somebody says something to you, right? But, and you feel the need to immediately respond. Like, and that, that was something that I had a big problem with when I was um, defending my, my artwork in school, right? Like I would get a question. And I would literally feel it, feel the need to like answer right away. It's like, man, they're going to hate it. If I take my time with this answer, I need to know it. I need to know it right away. And then I would say something that I don't mean. But what I realized through public speaking classes, you could wait, you can go five to like eight seconds with no words and people won't even realize. Like you can take that five to eight seconds and think before you respond. Right. And that's that's literally something for for more like in person conversations, because when you're texting and stuff like that, you kind of have more time to think about your response and then give it then give it. But when you're talking to people in person, you know, you have this you have this anxiety, right, that you feel that you need to say it immediately. Um, but the reality is you can take those five seconds and those five seconds, they feel like four ever for you like it feels so long it feels so wrong to take that much time for myself but then I respond and it's like I responded immediately it's like they don't even notice so make sure you're giving yourself that I honestly will just take a deep breath or take two deep breaths just focus on my breath then come back to the thought and respond but if I immediately like react without breathing, I'm going to say something I don't mean. Like I know, I just know that about myself. And it, it was a big problem in my last relationship because I never, I was never given that time. It's like, I always responded being like, I need a second to think about this. And she wanted the answer right then. And then I reacted with emotion and then it turned into a whole fight. And it's like, it's this whole thing that can be avoided if you just give yourself that time. If you make sure that people respect your boundaries and get and make sure you have that time for yourself, take the time, whatever you need. And, you know, all these things, these simple shifts come from an awakened mind. You know, they, their abilities of those people that take the time to respond in a thoughtful and intent, intentional manner, Right. And it, it takes time. It's a practice. It's a skill, right? It's like you got to you gotta be able to um, take that second and, and find something that'll help you. Like for me, it's taking three deep breaths. Like, and if you're, if you're talking with somebody in person, you can't, you can't literally just be like, because then they'll like see that you're like, stressed and trying to calm down you know it's like you gotta you gotta find something that can help you um help you just kind of give yourself that second to think you know it, it's really really helpful 
to find a solution for you. For me, it's taking a couple deep breaths. You know, I honestly, I'll, I'll like, I find that when I'm anxious, I like, like miniature pain. <laughs> and I don't really know how else to say it, but like, if I'm anxious, stressed, um, I'll literally just take my nail and I'll just stab my finger like that. And it's like, it, it that's not like I'm cutting myself, right? It's just like a little, little indentation like that. But that little bit of like physical exertion gets the anger out so that I can calm down and respond with, with, with relaxation, respond with an intentional, intelligent response and not some childish reaction that comes immediately from my, to my brain, which is mostly curse words. <laughs> so, <laughs> so understanding that we got to find something that works for us. Maybe this will work for you. Maybe it won't. Right. But finding that solution is really, really important. Um, and awareness comes from a positive, healthy environment and avoiding low vibrational foods and substances. You know, we got to cater our environment for health, right? We want to get the chips out of the house. We want to get all the tasty cakes and, and donuts and treat cereals. I call them treat cereals, but like Fruit Loops, all that sugary breakfasty stuff. Um, get the pancake mix out. Get the Get the waffles out of there. Get the syrup out of there. Get all this crap that is literally nothing good for you. Um, if you want a pancake, you got to go buy it at IHOP, right? It's like it's those simple things where it's like you got to go out of your way to do the bad things, which stops you from doing it most of the time. And catering your environment to help you with these things is really, really good um, because, you know, an aware, an aware, an awakened mind somebody who's aware of, of how they feel, what affects them, will be able to tell what is positive and what's negative in their environment. So I would, I would urge you to cater your environment. Go back after today's call. Take the weekend and just look around. If you got a TV in your bedroom, take it out. You know, if, if you got, if you're sleeping with your cell phone, you know, maybe set your alarm really loud and just put it on the other side of the room. It's like do do one simple shift this weekend to cater your environment to help you think more positively and really, really raise that vibration. You know, just do one thing. That's all I ask Because like for me, I'm going to I'm going to start sleeping without my phone. Um, that's going to be my thing. And um, I might do something else as well. I'm not sure. But. I'll take the weekend to think about it, but yeah, I hope that you guys, I hope you guys, I hope this makes sense for you guys. Um, and you know, it, oh, what was the last thing? Yeah. So environment, this is going to be the last sentence. I think this is just a good way to end it. Um, you know, environment often makes or breaks people. It's so true. It's like who you live with can affect everything. If they're partying every weekend, you're probably going to party every weekend or you're just going to be disturbed. Your sleep's going to be disturbed, right? It's like environment can make or break people so easily. So be sure to set yourself, your environment up for success. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this call. Thank you for all the activity in the chat. That was great. Um, and I hope everybody has a great weekend. Hope everybody made, I hope this made sense for everybody. If you guys have questions or if you need some help, um, trying to figure out what to do next, feel free to hit me up. Um, if you guys could like and subscribe to this call and my page, that would be amazing. I would love to get some more activity on my YouTube and just get this value out to more people because I really think it's important stuff. Um, so thank you guys, and I hope you have a great day. Uh, tomorrow is going to be meditation with GoGo. -Go at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So I will see you all there and in the chats today. All right. Peace and love. Have a good night or day, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, guys.